in celebrating and observing Easter, we are observing the 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 event that made our belief system what it is today, and that event is the death and the resurrection of Jesus. But this death and resurrection of Jesus is so significant for many different reasons. It has so many benefits for us, and as as Paul in the Bible talks about. Um, you know, if Christ didn't die and rose again, then we are men most miserable. There's no resurrection. The thing for us as believers is not just to observe the fact that Jesus died, or that he was buried, or that he was um, that he rose again. But the real um, focus of us as believers should be: How do I benefit from that? How do I access? the full provisions of the cross in my life first of all what are the provisions of the cross you know what's the benefit of jesus dying apart from being forgiven of my sins are there other benefits and then when i know what the benefits of the cross is how do i get those benefits in my life so that i could live out the full potential of what it means born again rather than living at a sub Par level. So this is what we're going to look at a little briefly today, and we're going to start off with Isaiah 53:5, which is probably a verse many of us are familiar with. And it says, "But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed." This. This is short, but it is very compact. It 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 has so much, so many different um, powerful truths in it. According to this verse, wounds are for transgressions, bruises are for iniquities, chastisement is for peace, and stripes is for healing. It's very specific. the The words in these verses are very specific. Just like when we talk about the birth of Jesus, Isaiah nine six says that the child is born and the son is given. The child here refers to Jesus' physical body, but the son refers to his divinity. In the same way, here in Isaiah fifty three, these words are very specific. So Jesus was wounded for transgressions. Transgressions means to go beyond a boundary that God set. We sin, and so he was wounded. To deal with sins. In other words, the wounds that Jesus suffered on the cross was so that we could be forgiven of any transgression. Any time we cross a boundary that God um, set up, Thou shalt not kill. If we kill, we cross a boundary. So the wounds that He received was a specific kind of punishment, so that there could be forgiveness of sins. Um, but then He was bruised. The bruising was a specific kind of punishment, so that we could have victory over iniquities. Iniquities is what we could call an addiction or a bondage. It's something that we we try to stop, we want to stop, but we keep falling into it. We keep doing it, and no matter what we do, it seems as if we're not able to overcome this thing. But on the cross, Jesus suffered a. Special kind of suffering called bruises, so he could deal with iniquities. Iniquities is more intense than transgressions. Transgressions is where you might lie sometimes, you might go on and 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 commit some sexual sin, but iniquity is where after you have lied so much times, it now becomes an addiction. It becomes a habit. And so it's not easy to just stop it. You have to now go and get retrained, reprogram, get delivered from that. So iniquities is more intense than transgressions, and in the same way, the bruises was a more intense suffering than the wounds, because Jesus had to suffer more intensely, so that the deeper sins. The stronger hold on our life could be broken, but then it goes even further. It says, "The chastisement of our peace was on him." The word "peace" means wholeness, a shalom in the Hebrew, and it means wholeness 
or it means soundness. So for example, some people don't have a sense of identity. They don't know who they are. Some people are so messed up emotionally that they don't know how to enjoy life. You know, when somebody does something good for them, they don't know how to receive it because their emotions are so messed up. They really don't know how to enjoy what is good. They only have a sense of evil. They only have a sense of things going bad. And that means that person is not sound in their emotions. They do not have wholeness. So they are not able to enjoy life. And that means that sometimes a person, because of their own sins, or sometimes because of other people's wickedness, they become so affected in their physical body. They become so affected in their emotions, so affected mentally, that they are no longer whole. They are no longer sound on the inside. But instead, they are um, messed up, as we see. That is a deeper level of suffering than iniquities. And iniquities itself is a deeper level of sin than transgressions. So when we look at Isaiah 53 verse 5, we see a deeper level in going into sin and in the consequences of sin. We start off with transgressions, which is disobedience. Sometimes we disobey, but we obey most of the times. But when we keep disobeying more and more, it goes into bondages or iniquities as the Bible calls it, it's addictions. And when we keep on there, we don't deal with that. That begins to affect us on the inside. It begins to affect our minds and emotions, even our physical bodies. And that means we do not have peace. We do not have wholeness or soundness on the inside. So Jesus suffered even more and the bible describes that more intense suffering as chastisement so there's one level of suffering called wounds a deeper level of suffering called bruises and an even deeper level of suffering called chastisement so that if we transgress we could be forgiven but if we go deeper than that and we have iniquities which is addictions or bondages we could be free from that there's power to, to, to break free from that. And then those iniquities and bondages and so on are beginning to affect us on the inside so we don't have wholeness, soundness, rest. Then we have power from God because Jesus was chastised to bring that rest, to liberate us on the inside and give us um, soundness on the inside. And that's what Isaiah shows us. There's a deeper level of suffering that Jesus had on the cross to address the deeper level of sin and the effects of sin on us. And to summarize all of that, it is called stripes. All his wounds, bruises and chastisement is summarized by saying stripes. And all of the transgressions and iniquities and, and, and the peace, the effects of those things, the Bible summarizes God's work to deal with those things by using the word healing. The healing deals with the transgressions. It makes us whole. It causes us to be people who are once again uh, living the way God wants us to live and enjoy what he wants us to enjoy. But how are we able to reach the stage where we can access victory over iniquities? You know, how can I access the full benefits of the death burial and the resurrection of jesus and this is where jesus in the new testament introduces us to the the means of accessing the power of the cross and one of those means he tells us is the what we call the communion or the table of the lord and the other way he tells us is walking in the spirit and this is what we're going to do we're going to look at scriptures to see how these are the avenues through which we access the power of the cross so one is the communion and the other is walking in the spirit when jesus was speaking to us about the lord's table what we call the communion today he told us first of all jesus didn't tell us to do to observe his birth the only thing he told us to, to do was to observe his death through the communion and then to observe the baptism 
repent and to be baptized. So he told us to do those things specifically. But in the communion, Jesus gave us uh, a description or an explanation of what is really going on. And it helps us to understand why the communion allows us to access the power of the cross. In the communion, Jesus told us that there are two main elements. There is his body and then there is his blood. His body and his blood. Two main elements. When we read the scriptures in the Gospels and even in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we look at what the scripture says about the body of Jesus, we can look at scriptures like Matthew 26, 26, Luke chapter 22, verse 19, John chapter 6, verse 27. And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 speaks about the communion. But when we look at these scriptures, we look at what, this, what Jesus says about his own body. We come to the understanding that the body of Jesus was broken so we could have healing. Specifically, the body of Jesus was broken so that we could have healing. And that is healing in every, um, every aspect. Physical healing emotional healing mental even spiritual we're doing demonic uh, we're dealing with demonic warfare and so on the body the broken body of jesus brings healing into our lives and so what jesus did on the cross by being um, wounded and all these different things and by his stripes we are healed that becomes a reality in our lives the more we receive it through communion through the broken body of jesus but then when we read those scriptures as well and we read the description of his blood what jesus himself said about his blood what what paul said about the blood of jesus we see that the blood of jesus which was shed for us produces or it makes forgiveness available to us so we have forgiveness of our sins. But then also Jesus says that this blood represents the new covenant which we have with him. So the blood of Jesus does not only give us forgiveness, but it also gives us covenant. It gives us the new covenant it's based on grace. The old covenant was based on doing and then being blessed. But the new covenant is based on being blessed already so we could then do. In the old covenant, it was more of works and performance. But the new covenant is about provision. It is God's provision or providing for us. And based on his provisions, we can now perform. So we don't perform in the new covenant to get from God. In this new covenant, God has already given us everything that relates to life and godliness. And we simply take what he has given us and that enables us to perform. The blood of Jesus gives us covenant so we could keep on taking. Keep on taking. Because in this covenant, we have access to everything. It is based on covenant we relate to God. We don't relate to God you know, based on how we feel or based on what happens. We relate to God based on covenant. And in the covenant, there are uh, promises, there are provisions. And this is what the blood gives us. So the, the way that I access the benefits of the cross that Isaiah chapter 53 spoke about, and even these verses in Matthew and John and all the others, and First Corinthians chapter 11 speaks about the way that I benefit the, the, the power from the power of the cross is by taking the communion and observing the death of Jesus in the communion. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul says, but Paul quoting Jesus said, as often as you take this, uh, eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death until he comes or you proclaim the Lord's death. You are reminding yourself, focusing on it, but you are proclaiming it to demonic spirits and to the world. So one of the ways that we 
are able to, re to receive and access the power of the cross in our daily lives is through the communion. But we don't need to wait for communion when it is being served in our local churches. We can take communion on our own because we could pray. We have a relationship with God. And we could go before God with the emblems on our own, bless the emblems and commune with Him. So one of the ways to receive the benefits of the cross is through communion. But the other way that we receive benefits, the, the, the power of the cross, the Bible tells us later on that the, the avenue or one of the other medium is by walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. The Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, that if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so this is very straightforward. If we walk in the Spirit, the automatic result is that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the focus of the believer, the our focus of, as people who are born again, should not be in trying to overcome the flesh by our efforts. Our focus should be on trying to walk in the Spirit. And in walking in the Spirit and learning what that means and how to do that, we will naturally stop living fleshly lives. Because some of us have, has it, we, we have it mixed up. We are trying to discipline ourselves. Stop lying, stop, stop uh, cheating, stop whatever is the, the sin that we are probably doing. And many of us are focused on trying to discipline ourselves to stop doing those things. And discipline is good. But that is not the solution. The, the, the Bible tells us very clearly, the solution is to walk in the Spirit. So the focus of our believer should be to understand what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? How do I do it? Then after I know how to do it, practice that. Practice a lifestyle of walking in the Spirit. That's what Galatians 5, 16 tells us. So what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? That phrase simply means to be controlled by the Holy Spirit and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we hear phrases like being filled with the Spirit and also walk in the Spirit. And those are similar terms. Generally, they are similar in what they mean. And they mean to be, to be controlled, to be guided by the Spirit, to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And it also means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. He puts His power in us and we live that power in our lives. And so this, this is what it means. So apart from taking communion, walking in the Spirit every day is how I access the power of the cross and I experience that power and all the benefits of the cross in my life. So how do I walk in the Spirit? I know what it means. It means to be controlled by Him. It means He is directing me. It means He is empowering me. But how do I get the guidance of the Spirit? How do I get the empowerment of the Spirit? How do I get Him? How do I give that control to Him? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22, 23, and 24 tells us. It says, Put off the old man, renew our minds and then put on a new man very direct very very straightforward to put off the old man means to make a decision and i'm not going to do what the old lifestyle does it's basically sinful lifestyle a lifestyle that displeases god to put off the old man means i make a decision to stop doing things that the old man does and the old man refers to the old lifestyle of sin. I'm going to stop doing that. And I'm going to focus on what God wants me to do instead. That's what it means to put off. It means I make a decision to turn away from that lifestyle. And I now focus on the lifestyle God wants. 
But then the next thing is, I don't try to do what God wants in my own strength. After I make a decision to stop the things which I know I shouldn't be doing, the Bible says, renew my mind, Ephesians 4.23. That means whatever is the weakness in my life or the sins that I am falling into continuously, I make a decision to stop them. I focus on God what wants me to do. And then I go in his word and I read and study and meditate on the lifestyle he wants me to live. In other words, I begin by meditating on the word, not by my effort, not by my own strength to try to do what is right but i begin by meditate and i take time <clears throat> and that's what it means by renewing my mind it means going into the word of god and understanding what he says about my life what he says that i am doing which is wrong what he says that i should be doing the writing and, and studying that understanding his thoughts his instructions understanding his mind as it relates to the sin or sins that I'm trying to deal with. And then the last thing, Ephesians 4.24 says, put on the new man. And then what that means is that you make a decision now to do what he wants. And you go out and you focus on doing that. The thing is, when you make a decision to do what he wants, and you go out to do that, you make a decision to obey him. Because you have spent time reading and studying and meditating on the word, it is true that renewed mind, the Holy Spirit is now able to give you the power to get your actions in line with what he wants. It is not our own willpower that will cause it, but it's his power by his spirit. And that is how I walk in the spirit every day is when I spend time with God on a daily basis, in His Word, in prayer, looking at where my life is, you know, examining my life, seeing the things that I need to stop, the things I need to change, renewing my mind with His Word in those areas where I need to change, in those areas of weaknesses, going into the Word and meditating on it in those areas. And then making a decision now to do what he wants. Going out and, 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 and practicing what he wants. But going out and doing that um, obedience, the power comes from the Spirit to do that. It is not our own will power. Because meditating on the Word of God is what causes the Spirit to release the power in my life. And that is how I walk in the Spirit. That is how the Spirit is able to empower me. That is how He is able to guide me. That is how He is able to enable me to access every benefit from the cross on a daily basis. So that is it. The more I, 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 I commune with God in the, at the communion table, the more I spend time with Him at that table, and the more I spend time with him and putting off the old man, meditating in, in his word, spending time with him, communing with him in prayer, and then putting on the new man, I'm able through those channels to access the full power of the cross. And then this time of Easter, is, it, 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 it is not only... Easter then becomes not only a time in the year that we observe the death, and resurrection but it becomes a, a, a lifestyle of living in the power of the cross a lifestyle of living in the reality of the resurrection of jesus and then the cross becomes real in our lives and so this is how we do it we access the power of the cross through the communion and through that relationship with god where we put off the old man renew our minds and we put on the new man the power of the cross is re will then be released in us on a daily lifestyle basis. Every day, we'll be experiencing the power of the cross. And so I'm hoping that this is a blessing to you and this was of some help um, to you, to all of us, as we 
celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, his death and his resurrection. But not only celebrate what he did, but also experience the benefits of it in our lives. And so if this is a blessing to you, I invite you to share comments, uh, give feedback, but I'm praying that it really is uh, a source of strength and encouragement to you. Until the next time, God bless you. Thank you.